Okay. Um, today we're broadcasting from uh, not only my social media channels, we're also broadcasting to the Photography Show's Facebook page, uh, Pixapro's Facebook page, um, oh, and uh, sorry, um, we're also broadcasting to the Pixapro's Facebook page, uh, their YouTube, my YouTube, um, and we're able to do this because of uh, we're using a platform called Restream. Now, Restream allows you to uh, multi-broadcast your, um, your stream to multiple different platforms at the same time, simultaneously, which is really cool. So that's why we're able to stream to all of these platforms at the same time. Now, if you want to be able to do this yourself, um, this stream is sponsored by Restream, and they are giving you the option to have a free pro plan for an entire month. All you've got to do is use the code TOMMY100 at the checkout, and you can get a free pro plan for 30 days. That is the plan that we're currently using right now. Um, so that's, that's Restream. So today, we're gonna to be talking about five ways that you can use fill lighting. And fill lighting is primarily used in conjunction with your key light. And what it does is it allows you to con uh, control the shadows. It allows you to control your contrast in your image. Now you can do this a couple of different ways. You can do this with not only strobes, but you can also do this with reflectors as well. So if you do have only one light at the moment, you're thinking of getting a second light or wanna try and take your images to that next level, then this is gonna be a really good stream for you to listen to. We're gonna be streaming for about an hour's time, um, but if you do have any questions during the stream, then Graham over to my left is gonna be affiliating all of those. So if you do have any questions at all, then do let us know and we'll answer, answer as many of you as you can. Um, Graham, do we actually have anyone watching? Everyone's watching. I think uh, they're saying John's sound and vision's fine. Oh, Marcus here and C fine. And James is watching from Switzerland. Switzerland, nice. If you're, if you're, <laughs> I, don't, well, I don't know why I said it like that. If, uh, <laughs> if, you're, if you're watching us from, uh, from abroad, then do let us know and be lovely to hear from you. But. We're going to do five different ways to use fill lighting, and I think we're just going to jump straight into it. I'll, I'll uh, do a bit of an, um, an outro with ev everyone that's helping us out here today. We've just gone live to the photography show, um, um, the actual photography show, which is happening this weekend. So hopefully if you are watching and you are a regular attender of the photography show, hopefully we can actually do this um, in September for real and we don't have to worry about all these kind of live technical hitches. No doubt it will happen. We had to do uh, the last setup in 15 seconds, which is scary, but um, hopefully we'll have a bit more time. But let's jump straight into it. The first setup is gonna be Rembrandt setup. So um, let's break everything down before we actually take a shot. So we are using a City 300 Pro. I'm gonna bring this down. So this stream is also sponsored by Pixapro. So this is the City 300 Pro. This is gonna be our main uh, key light that we're using here. Um, everything you see here today is Pixapro. I've left as many uh, links in the description box below to the products that we are using. There might be one or two that I have missed because we kind of last minute decided to add some products. So if anything is missing, you do want a link to it, then let me know and I can send you a link for it. But so this is the 300 Pro. This is gonna be our key light, our main light. That's going into a 65 centimeter rice bowl shaped softbox. You can see we're having no diffusion, oh sorry, no, no grid on it. We're having a double diffuse, no grid. That's gonna be my key light. Now with all of these setups today, I'm gonna to show you what it looks like on its own and then when we add our fill in as well. As I said, we're gonna be using a mixture of not only reflexes but also strobes to, to use fill lighting as well. But we're gonna start a little bit easy and we're gonna start with um, having a reflector as our fill for this one. But let's get a shot in first. Um, we've got Rihanna who's modeling for us today. If you wanna follow Rihanna, she is at Rihanna Horner on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> And there's a link to Rihanna's Instagram um, in the description below as well. Right, so let's, let's get started. So you're one, you might be wondering, what on earth is that thing attached to your camera, Tommy? Now, if you are new to this channel, um, this is a Ricoh 400 ring flash. This will end up being part of one of my setups later, but I'm not gonna switch it on just yet because it's, um, it's a bit cumbersome to take on and off. So I have left it on for now, but I haven't, um, it won't be on just yet. We're gonna use this a little bit later on. So my settings, I'm at 1 60th of a second at F6.3 at ISO 200. 
I'm using a 50 millimeter Sigma art lens and I'm using a 5D Mark III. It's my go-to, I've had it for years. Um, and the trigger is an ST4. All right, let's take a shot and see what we're getting. So I've got Dan over to my left. He's gonna be helping us out today. And he's gonna make sure all of these setups run smoothly. So we're gonna start off with our key light. It's the rice bowl shape. I'm gonna add at around 45 degree angle. Let's start there. Okay, let's take a test shot, Rihanna. Okay, let's see how that's looking. Okay, that's looking nice. So what I need to do, if I wanted to get it more Rembrandt style, so if you are um, familiar with Rembrandt, Rembrandt gives you that classic triangle shape light on the, the unlit side of the face. So we're not getting that quite yet. So what we need to do, if you want to get that classic Rembrandt style, is I need to move this slightly further to the side. Now I didn't really change much, so I didn't really move it that much, but you can see it will make a little bit of a difference. So same again, Rihanna, that's it. And then moving your head this way for me, that's it, hold that. A little bit more front on, that's it, hold that. Lovely, hold that. Okay, there we go. So that is getting that more classic triangle shape. So if I zoom in there, so that's giving us that Rembrandt style. So that's the key on its own. That's the key on its own. Now I'm gonna add in the fill light and that's just gonna come from a reflector. Okay, I've had one question so far, uh, talking about the rice bowl, Tommy. Yeah. Is, uh, is it a silver or white inside the rice bowl? Inside is a silver, I believe. Almost certain it's a silver. Yeah, it's a silver and now I've got it double diffused as well. Cool. As you can see, so Dan has introduced a, um, the reflector. It doesn't have to be quite this big if, if you don't want to. This is a 150 is it, gram. Uh, that's the 150 with the handles from uh, Essential Photo. From, from Pixel Pro. So the 150 in size, it's quite convenient because it's got the handles and we've also got a little clip on the top there. That might be something that isn't included in the description below if you are watching this live. I will add that in, which is quite convenient so that you don't have to have someone hold it all the time. So that's pretty cool. So we've now added uh, the reflector in. I did move the light slightly because I showed you if it, was, if it was silver, but hopefully it's pretty much in the same spot so that we can see a comparison between the two. So we'll get the same again, Rihanna. So have your, that's it. Perfect, hold that. Okay, and then if we compare the two. So as you can see there, that fill light is introducing some, uh, that, an, an, another source of light over onto the unlit side of the face. Now, if, if Dan wanted to move that even a little bit closer, that's it, if we just wheel that closer, that's it. And we take the same again. Might be, oh, sorry, Dan, might be a bit too far, just a touch back more. Lovely, Rihanna. Okay. So just by simply moving it even closer, that introduces more fill into the, into the image here. So if I again compare them. So on the far left, you can see that that's without anything. That's just the key light. The middle one is when we started to introduce our, um, our reflector. And then the one on the far right is that moving that even closer. So you can see, you can start with something really cheap, really inexpensive. So that would be Rembrandt setup. So I think we're going to move on to setup two, if that's cool. Um, cool. Uh, we've had a question from James uh, who's asked uh, why don't you use the modeling light? Do you personally use the modeling light? I've never seen it on your videos before, but... Why uh, don't I use it? Yeah, or have, do you normally use modeling lights? Yeah, to, um, to, I, normally, I normally do. It was actually more of a technical thing here in the studio. Um, it was just more of an exposure thing and a white balance thing. But yeah, absolutely. When mm. I'm not being filmed with multiple cameras and streaming out <laughs> on social media, then absolutely, I do like to use uh, modeling lights because obviously using the modeling light is going to help you 
give you an idea of where the shadows are going to fall um, when you fire the flash. Yep. Oi, here we go. This is live. This is live. <laughs> Every, everyone, needs, everyone needs Dan in their studio. Okay, so this second setup is, uh, is high key. Because <laughs> Dan's, so with this setup, we're going to try and create almost the opposite effect. So this is going to be a very, um, it's not going to be, it's not going to be a moody look at all. It's going to be very high key. It's going to be um, using a uh, flash this time instead of a reflector. And as you can see here, we've also introduced a portable backdrop as well. This is a, a pop-up backdrop. Again, it's available on Pixar Pro's website. Um, the, the link should be in the description box below. And this is a white and a, what is it black on the black other side? Outside. Yeah, so super convenient for corporate work if you want to pop up and you want to get a quick shot with a white backdrop. So this is what we're going to use here today with a 160, 50, 60? They, they, do, a, they do a 60 and they do a 130. So and I this think is that's the one a 130. That the one 130. Yeah, this, but it, yeah. I tend to find it actually feels like a 150 because the amount of light and feathering you get from it. And the reason being is because this light fires towards the umbrella and then back out. See, we're, we're, me and Graham are kind of mixing up our, our gear. So this, this particular modifier is Graham's, which I really like. So I'm, I think I'm going to pick one of these up because the light bounces into the umbrella and then back out. And the, and the advantage of that is you get a softer light and far less chance of getting those hot spots because it's not firing directly into that diffusion. It's firing back into the umbrella and then bouncing back out. So we've got this, uh, we've got the 130. Now, because it's a much bigger modifier, that means it's gonna create an even softer light, which is quite ideal if you are trying to create a high key setup. Now our fill is gonna be that Rico 400, which is that ring flash that you saw on the front here. This is my go-to, I love this uh, ring flash. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start, now we're using strobe, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the fill and then I'm gonna introduce the key light second. So I'm gonna meter it at a rand, I'm, I'm not even gonna, gonna get my flash meter out because, because, this is on, because this is mobile, this isn't stable, there's no point in metering it because I only need to take a few steps and it's gonna be metered out. And you know what, today I fancy just doing everything by eye because not everyone has a flash meter, so I'm just gonna do it by eye. So we're gonna start with our Rico and then we're gonna introduce uh, the, uh, the big umbrella uh, next. So let's start with this. Okay, so same again for Rihanna. I'm just gonna move this. Okay, cool, hold that right there. Okay, I'm at one eighth power on the Rico 400, and let's take a test shot. Uh, could you actually swing your legs the opposite way, so they're this way, please? Yeah, that's cool, and same again. Uh, and then bring your arms up again, that's it, hold that, and then looking up towards this way, okay. Okay, so if we look at that shot, it doesn't look, it doesn't look great, but that's okay. Nothing to do with Rihanna, of course. No. <laughs> it's, it doesn't look great because it looks quite underexposed, it looks quite flat, but that's okay. I want it to be like that. Because generally speaking, your fill light should be lower in power than your key light. If your fill light is stronger than your key, then it's not really a fill, because the, that's the, the, um, the characteristic of a fill light. It's just filling in, it's just helping out. So with this, I'm purposely underexposing, and when I then turn on the key light, that's gonna help it all come together. But before I put both of them on, I'm gonna put the key light on and turn the Rico off, again, just to show you what it's doing independently. So I'm gonna turn that off and switch A on. So that's, so in the key light, I should say, is a Pika 200. If I swing that around. Now the Pika 200 is a, a fantastic little pocket flash. Am I going to have problems if I try and pull this out, Graham? Uh, I think so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, we've got, I think we've got another Pika 200 that I can show you. So the, so the beauty of the uh, Pika 200 is it's very small, it's very portable. If you're, uh, if you're new on this channel, I've got loads of travel videos where I use this exact uh, modifier. That's all right, and I'll just... Uh, so this is what 
this like, looks like in there. This is the Pika 200. And this is the uh, smart bracket that allows me to put any modifier I want on this. Uh, doesn't, it can be literally in, including something as big as this. So this is my go-to for travel. This is what's in here right now. And you can even use a speed light. So we had this question um, in the last live stream. Can we use a speed light in this as well? Absolutely, of course you can. That's the good thing about the smart brackets is that they can be used with the speed lights as well. You don't have to be using really expensive equipment, which is purposely why we're using Pika 200s and 300s today, so that you don't have to go for the big 1200 or 600 watt strobes. All right, thanks man. Okay, so uh, let's switch this around, switch this back on. Okay, again, I'm putting it around a 45 degree angle, which is my go-to. And we're just gonna put this at around one, we'll go one eighth power. No, we'll go a quarter power because it's a pick of 200. So I'm just guessing here. This is just the key light on its own. Okay, Rihanna. Okay, not, not bad for a first go. I'm gonna swing that round a little bit more. Okay. Same again, Rihanna. That's it, hold that. Okay and just change that up again. That's it, hold that. Okay, so that's the key light on its own. That's the key light on its own. I'm now gonna switch the Rico on and we're gonna combine both of them together. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, same again, Rihanna. So we can see it just fills in those shadows even more. Looks, let's put that down. So we compare again, so that's the key light on its own. That was the Rico on its own. Uh, yeah. And that's when you combine all three together. So again, you look at that first image, the Rico on its own doesn't look very good, doesn't look very nice. It's, for me, I call it Mr. Phil, this, this light. It's, I don't use it as a key, I don't think it works as a great key, but as a fill light, it's my absolute favorite tool to use. Um, and that's, you can see when you combine all three. Now actually, um, Dan's already on it. Um, Dan, can we try introducing a second fill? We're gonna introduce a reflector as well as using the Rico as fill. So we've got two source of fill lights now, just to see what kind of light we can get. Okay, same again, Rihanna. Okay, one, two, three, bring your arms up again. That's it, hold that. Okay, so I took a, I've taken a few steps forward. Actually, no, it doesn't look too bad, it looks pretty good. Okay, that's it. Okay, so have a little fun with this now, Rianne. Every time you hear that, that's it, that's cool, hold that. That's it, bringing your arms up again, that was cool, hold that. Hold that, hold that, hold that. Every time you hear the click, just change that up. Your keyword is to fidget. That's cool. Hold that, and bringing your arms back up again. That's it, hold that. Good, and relax. Okay, cool. So, in, so that, in theory, is only two lights. Um, no, it's, yeah, two lights. It's, we're using the big umbrella, the Rico, and then we're using the uh, reflectors just to fill in. I think we're gonna change it over there. Um, so you can see, just with those little tweaks, you can create a really nice high key look, and very different to our first setup that we did just a moment ago when we were using the Rembrandt setup. So really inexpensive equipment that we've used there, just that pop-up backdrop plus the umbrella. Now, it doesn't have to be an umbrella. We had a question in the last live stream about whether it has to be a, um, whether it has to be an umbrella, but that's certainly not the case. It can be a soft box as well. It doesn't have to be. Cool, we just got one, uh... A uh, question here from James again. Uh, are you shooting the Pikas with bare bulb or the Fresnel head? Good question. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a really popular question. I am currently using it with the Fresnel heads. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why aren't you using the bare bulb? Um, personally, when you're, when you're firing it through such a big modifier like this, and actually we were... Yeah, when, because we're using such a large modifier, I don't personally see a massive difference between the two. If I was using it bare bulb, 
then 100% I will be using the bare bulb attachment. But because it's in such a big modifier, I have no issue with using the Fresnel. I know that people will be a bit tricky about using the bare bulb, but I don't see, I don't see too much of an issue. I, do you know what? The, the reason why I do use the Fresnels more often than not is to take advantage of the MagMod system because you can't attach your MagMod grids or any accessory to the bare bulb head, as some of you might know. Um, so that's why I end, tend to end up using the Fresnel heads more often than not. Cool, and Guru's asked, uh, how does having a rim light influence on the subject? And also uh, for fill, because obviously if you've got a, an effect light or a rim light, that's also gonna affect your fill as well. Yeah, I know, absolutely. Um, we could, we could 100% be using a rim light here today as well. The purpose of the demo is more about fill lighting. So I didn't want to start introducing a third light because it's, um, I wanted to pay more attention on the fill light today. But we were actually having this discussion in, again in the last live stream. If we were having a, a choice between having a rim light or a fill light, if you could only have one or the other, I would, ha I would choose a fill light over a rim light. For me, a fill light is more important because it's, it's influencing, it's not, not influencing, it's working in conjunction with my key light. It's helping my key look even better. And my key is obviously what's lighting my subject. So out of the two, I much prefer to nail and have a fill than a rim. Rim is like third priority on my list. It's key, then it's fill, and then rim. How, how do you feel about that, Graham? I think that's probably about right. It's like you're naming your three friends or something, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have Phil. Yeah. <laughs> my mate Key. Yeah. <laughs> my mate Key. Yeah. Uh, Dan is being super quick at setting up my next setup. Um, <laughs> let's try. Last time I did it with the grid. I'm going to try it without the grid this time. And let's actually go back. Let's uh, let's go back to the uh, to the backdrop here. Actually, I'm going to change it up. Okay. All right, so for this setup, we're doing a classic um, clamshell lighting, but the difference here is quite often people will use a reflector for their clamshell, but I purposely wanted to use a second strobe for my fill using a clamshell setup. And again, the reason why you would choose to use a strobe over a reflector for your fill mm. is again, you have maximum control. You can decide exactly how much power or how little power you want. So we're going to actually see that. We're, you, we're going to actually see how much power is too much power um, and where I like to have it. But obviously this is personal preference and also the position of this is quite important as well. So let me show you. So at the moment um, the light is pointing uh, towards, uh, up towards Rihanna's face but what I actually like to do is I actually like to position it so that it's more hitting towards uh, Rihanna's uh, knees or her, or her stomach and the reason why I like to do that is because again when it comes to feathering the light the feather the light here when you get the tail end of the light that for me is is the softest part of the light the center is going to be um it's going to have that hot spot and I don't want that hot spot particularly for a fill so that's why I'm purposely aiming it down so that I'm getting the tail end of the light coming up and getting the shadows on the unlit side of the face okay so let's start with let's start with our key this time. So we're purposely going to turn B off. So again, on my trigger, I always like to have B as my fill light and A as my key light. That's just how I like to work. So we're going to start with our key and let's take a test shot. I should say I'm going to turn this off now because I don't want this to influence. I don't want you guys to think that I'm using two fills. So just bear in mind that this isn't on right now. We're only going to be using this. So I'm just gonna check the position of that beauty dish. So I'm gonna hit that square on. And I think if we bring it slightly towards you, Dan, just the touch. Oh, can you just set your uh, cable on your, your mic, just in front of it, that's all. Is my... <laughs> Jumping a little bit. <laughs> we good, Cass? Is it all right now? Cool. Cool, okay, okay. Does that look like that square on to you, Rihanna? Okay, let's actually bring, oh, we can't bring it down. Oh, no, we can. We just bring it down here. We've got a quick question from John here. 
who's asking, are you using ITTL on the key? I am using fully manual, I'm totally manual um, on all of these setups. That's just personally how I like to work. You can absolutely go TTL. I believe they have a function where you can go TTL, take a shot. If it looks good to you, you hit a button and it will then um, go into, into manual at that mode that you're at TTL. Okay. Is my audio still okay, Cass? A little bit jumpy still. Um, maybe we should swap microphones. Yep. Just the receiver or the whole mic? Um, it, it, might be the, it might be the lapel, so we'll just do a little switch. Sorry, folks at home. Yeah. See, this is what happens when you don't know. Yeah, like, it's like... Oh my god. I'm being <laughs> defeated by a lavalier mic. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> Intermission, folks. All right. There's always, there's, there's always something that happens at the photography show. I think the worst kind of outtake at a photography show I've had was when, I think I shared it on my Instagram recently, I was doing a, a talk for the social media stage and um, I was playing a video right at the very end and right at the end of the video it went <laughs> and it just cut out <laughs> and I thought really quickly on my feet, I was like, well if you want to watch the rest of that video then please check out my YouTube channel because it was talking about YouTube and I thought there's no other way I could end that. Right, <laughs> okay. How are we sounding now, Cass? A little bit better. Is the battery good? Oh, we'll just we'll crack on. We'll see how we get on with this while we do this next setup. Okay, so set up here. Okay, I'm just going to take a test shot. I believe I'm on A. Okay, I'm going to bring the power down. Just guessing here. Okay. Okay, cool. Not bad. Not bad for straight out the ballpark. So that's the key. That's the key on its own. I'm now going to start, I'm now going to turn V on. Our fill. And let's combine the two. Same again, Rihanna. And just to reiterate, what is the modifier we're using on the fill light for this setup? The modifier we're using is the same one we used in setup one, which is the 65 centimeter rice bowl shaped softbox here. Um, no, diff uh, no grid on it, it's just uh, double diffused, and that has the City 300 Pro in it at the moment. Cool. Okay, so if we look at that example, um, if I can bear the two, so you, again, you can see here with the key light on its own, and then with the fill light added together. Let's try increasing the power of the fill and I want to just show you and demonstrate to you what it looks like when you maybe use a bit too much of the fill. Same again uh, Rihanna. So again here looking there it's, it's looking a little bit too much there for me. You can kind of see that there's something else being influenced here and it doesn't look as subtle. And that's what I feel like for me it is. It's, it's all about subtlety. So I'm gonna bring the power down for that. I can't remember what power I was on before. So let's just try 164 power. Same again, Rihanna. Okay, that's looking nice. That's a nice kind of balance between the two for me. Uh, I think we're, we'll be done on this one, man. So again, just a comparison. That is the difference between using the key on its own and using um, using the uh, City 300 Pro with the rice bowl shape for our fill. And again, I was able to have that control and turn it up and down, whereas with a reflector, you're kind of limited to the distance. It's not kind of fine-tuned like it is on a flash meter. So that's set up three, two. Yes. 
Three. <laughs> three. <laughs> three. Yeah. Get it right uh, the first time. Do we have any questions at this point? Uh, we right? have a quick question from Tor, uh, from Chris, uh, which is actually something we were discussing earlier. Uh, apologies for the, the stupid question. The question you don't know is never stupid. Absolutely. But when using bare bulbs on the Pika 200 Pro, do you attach the bulb once inside the softbox? I find it difficult to push through the S bracket otherwise. And we were having the same issue when we were setting up this morning with the S brackets. Please do, go on. Then uh, we actually detached the head beforehand and then pushed it through and then attached the whole head, whether that's the normal head, the bulb head or the circular version of it. And we found that easier. That's just, it just seems to be, for me, the, the head part of the Pika 200 just seems to be that little bit fatter uh, than it would be um, than the body. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. So take the take the head off, and then put it through, and then attach it. It's the same also when I use um, be uh, a beauty dish. Sometimes I like to use a beauty dish as a hair light, but I also like to put a gel on it as well. Now again, if you're using Magmod, so I like to use Magmod. Now you've got the clamp on there, then you've got the gel on there. There's no way that that's going to get through a smart bracket with all of that stuff attached. So just like Graham said, I will. Put, I will put the beauty dish on and then I will uh, um, oh, sorry, take the head off, put, the, put it on the beauty dish and then put it on once it's, once it's there. So it's, it's a good way around it rather than yeah. taking the whole thing apart. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, the, no, a question here from John, but I think we kind of answered this already. Uh, you said you feathered the field light because otherwise you'd get hotspot. Is the field light not double diffused? But in that setup, uh, we weren't double diffused on the rice bowl, were we? We, we, we were, were actually. Okay, we were. Okay. We were, yeah. On both the Rembrandt setup one and what we just there, they, it was a double diffuse. So even though you've double diffused it, you're still going to get that hot spot. So even when it's double diffused, even if it was triple diffused, I will still feather. I don't know how you feel, um, I, Graham. Obviously, I specialise in kid portraiture, so I feather all the time yeah. because you're always going to get that uh, that hot spot. If because you're always going to get a brighter bit in the center of the modifier than you are around the outside yeah uh, regardless of how many times you feather it there's always going to be uh, slightly brighter in the middle than the outsides 100 percent. cool um so this next setup we're going to do is um this next setup we're going to do is we're going to do a um a hard light so we're going to use a standard seven inch reflector which um which dan has just organized for me are we here yeah, so, uh, sorry, we've, I, I've, I've put a massive softbox right in the center of this now. So we've got, we're completely covering a, um, a camera. So what we're doing here is we're using a standard uh, seven inch reflector. You can, uh, I don't know if you can see from there, Mike, but I've actually done a bit of a bodge job here because my grid wouldn't quite fit on this reflector here. So we've, uh, we've just put some duct tape around it just so it would fit. So what we're gonna do is this is gonna be our key light. And this massive uh, umbrella that we used for our high key is gonna be our fill light. That's gonna be dead center. So I'm gonna put this into position. So Rihanna, I'm just gonna need your hand here to help me position this. Actually, if I turn the modern light on here, and if you can let me know if that's hitting you square on. About there, yeah? Yeah. So that's going to be our key. So let's start with our key while the uh, guys are just setting up the fill light for me. Okay. Again, just a reminder, I'm at 1 60th of a second F 6.3 at ISO 200. So let's just take a test shot here. We hold that, Rihanna. Okay, cool. Okay, so you can see very dark, very dramatic there. We can see that there's hardly any detail in, in and around the shot, but that's where we're going to add our fill in, in, in a second. Got this massive big umbrella that's directly behind me, and hopefully that's going to create a painterly quality to the image. This is the element right here that gives it that painterly quality to it, is nailing your fill light. So we're going to switch this on, and we're going to combine the two. So I'm going to switch B on my flash meter. Again, we're just kind of eyeballing it. We're not using a flash meter today. 
I'm going to just set, are we got the, uh, so we've got the peaker in here, so I'm intentionally going to go quite higher. Let's go maybe half power. I'm going to go all the way to half power. And let's take a test shot and combine the two. Ellis, bringing your arms up again, Rihanna. That's it, hold that. Oop. Just check that. Oh, I just need to change the uh, group on here. So it was set, now set it to B. All right, let's, let's try that one again. Okay. What are we gonna do? So I'm gonna make I'm gonna make a little tweak here. I'm gonna stand back a little bit. I'm gonna turn this down. Just get the position here. Okay. Sorry, Dan. I might be moving the uh, in the way of one of your cameras. You're going to bring that down a little bit. Sorry if I'm talking to the wall, guys. <laughs> we, I really should have planned this one better, but all right, let's try this again. So I'm at oh, power. Okay, same again, Rihanna. That's looking good. Hold that. And same again. Every time you hear the click, just change that up for me. Okay, I'm going to go to half power. Hold that, lovely. Cool, cool, okay, really nice. So you can see now when we combine both of those together, if we compare that to our first image, and that's actually take another one horizontal just so it looks like an even better before and after. I'm gonna turn the fill light off again so we just got our key once more. Lovely. And we compare that. So it just kind of gives it that little painterly quality. If anything, I'm actually going to turn the key light down a little bit. Just a little bit. Same again, Rihanna. And can you try uh, pointing your knees towards this way and looking up towards this key light here? Okay, and bringing your arms up again. And same again. That's it. Oh, hold that, hold that, hold that. Chin down. That's it. Bring in your asset. Yep, you got it, you got it. Look. Okay, I'm just going to tweak the key. A little bit more. That's it, hold that. Have I, have you moved out of the way or is that, uh, that's probably my fault, I moved you out there. Okay, hold that, lovely. Okay, yeah, that, that was the problem. Right, I'm just gonna <laughs> tweak the settings again. That was my fault, my bad. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, do you know what? I'm actually gonna just switch the Ricoh 400 on. So I'm, I'm gonna have two fills again. So I've got this big old fill and I'm gonna have this fill on as well. This is gonna create a bit more of a specular fill because it's such a smaller light source in comparison to this big one. So let's do the same again, Rihanna, that's it. So this I'm at one eighth power and it just turns it a little bit more high key for us. Lovely. Cool, and relax. Right, so if we compare again those that first setup, uh, sorry, that first light, and we start to introduce all the elements here. So it almost feels like it was lit with only one light, but we've actually used two lights here. So that is combining hard light with a soft fill together. So that's set up four. Four, yeah. Four. <laughs> cool, Dan, thank you. So we're gonna move on to our final setup. Now it was actually quite funny. When we did this just a moment ago for the photography show, the actual photography show page, um, we were on a time limit. So I, I, how are we doing for time? Have we... Have, Not too have bad, been, about 45 minutes. About 45 minutes, okay. So we only had about 30 minutes to do all of this. So we only had 15 seconds to get the last little bit. Um, so we've got a little bit longer to actually do this. But this next setup we're gonna do is we're gonna, the last one, we're gonna combine gels um, as our fill light. We're actually gonna use color 
to influence our shadows this time as well. So instead of this, this light up here, instead of the standard reflector, we're gonna use a snoot. Um, again, this is quite inexpensive. You've got the optical snoot, which picks a pro cell, but that can be a little bit expensive and you've got to worry about putting a lens on it as well. But for this, you don't have to worry about that. It's just a standard snoot that I've used um, quite a few times. I love it, it's really great. Um, and we're gonna combine that, as I say, with a blue gel made from Magmod. <laughs> uh, just a couple of questions on the last setup. Uh, one from uh, James Nelson. He's asked, uh, would you, how would you light how would you have the lights in the same position or would you move position if you were shooting with more than one person? Advice for getting the same sort of shadow and look as the hard light and the soft light um, when you have a second or third person in the shot, for uh, example. Yeah. Good question. So let's, uh, let's just say you definitely want to have that hard light for, for, all of, for everyone in there. For that, you would need more than one key light. Everyone would need their own key light. If you only, if you wanted that specific hard light, if you're happy to maybe use a softbox instead that has a bit more of a coverage, um, then you might be able to get away with lighting more than one person. But then again, doing that, you kind of wouldn't, it wouldn't look as hard. So unfortunately, the only way around that um, is you're gonna need more than one key light. Everyone's gonna need their own key light, but but fill, obviously you don't need, everyone doesn't need their own fill. You can certainly use just the same one fill and that will just give a nice splash of light across the whole scene because it is so big. So if you want that, you're gonna need a key light for each person or put, it on, put your camera on a tripod and you can uh, do a bit of composite, light one of them, then the second, then the third and merge them together. That, that's a way around it if you can fiddle around in Photoshop and do it. <laughs> Yeah, you could always do uh, a mixed photograph where you take them individually and stitch them together. That's, yeah. that's quite a, a big thing now that I've seen, especially in America. A lot of people doing group shots by doing At the same setups and weddings and stuff where they actually stitch people into photographs. Yeah, I, I, do you know what? I, I, I do that at weddings. I, I do at weddings. If I, um, if, an, if I have the luxury of having the group long enough, then I'll set my camera on a tripod and, if, and I'm, when I say group, I mean like 10 people. So I'll have maybe a 65 centimeter, yeah, that rice bowl that we use, that's the one I use for, for weddings. And if you go onto PixPro's website, there is actually a wedding kit that I have produced, which comes with not only that, but the, uh, the Pika 200 Pro. Um, but I will certainly use that to light multiple people and then stitch them together because, you know, at a wedding, I can only take one light and I've got to carry light. <laughs> cool. Debbie's asked a couple of questions on the last setup. Uh, she was just asking again, what was the size of the large modifier? So I'm guessing she's speaking about the umbrella. And also, would you get uh, one shadow on the backdrop on the last setup we had? But I don't believe we did get a, a shadow on you, the previous setup. We we did uh, we did get a little shadow here. If that's what she was referring to, does she want to kind of eliminate that? Uh, I'm guessing that's the, the yeah. only question. Would you get one shadow on the backdrop? Yeah, so, so yeah. Okay, so looking here, yeah, you do get the shadow on the backdrop. Adding that fill light not only helps, it, well, that's, that's exactly the, the characteristics of a fill light. It, it, um, it reduces the shadows. It controls the contrast. So adding that fill will eliminate, well, not maybe not eliminate. Well, it depends how high your fill light is, but it will certainly reduce the shadow hitting the backdrop. But if you want to, um, get rid of it entirely, you can do a couple of things. You can either reposition that, that, um, that light, you can maybe position it so it's directly overhead, which means that the shadow would fall directly behind Rihanna. That's one way to avoid the shadow. The alternative, <coughs> excuse me, the alternative is to bring um, Rihanna away from the backdrop, which means that the shadow will fall um, past, the, uh, past the backdrop, it will fall down. So if you want to eliminate that, you can bring them away. So that's a couple of ways to eliminate it or use the fill to combine to reduce the shadow. Cool. And then one of your favorite questions is, uh, in the hard light, uh, on the key light, what was the degrees of the grid? Uh, and do you have a preference on what grid you use? Uh, in terms of what, in terms of degree? In terms of degree, yeah. Uh, I don't have a huge preference. It depends on what I'm lighting. So if you're, if you're shooting products, you might want a, um, a more narrow degree. Um, but to answer that question, it is, I believe, a 30-degree grid. 
and that's kind of an in joke because uh, I often get I often get that it is a it's a thirty degree I was right this is a thirty degree grid um, and inside that is a tiny well we're not going to do this again so I'm just going to rip this up but inside this is a little diffusion plate I'm not going to be able to take this up there we go yep thirty degree and then I've got that on as well, just to add a tiny bit of diffusion, and that on as well. So that's, yeah, so I've, I've got no real preference really. Um, this isn't really my go-to. I, if I use grids, it's often on soft boxes or beauty dishes. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, I wanted to get a really, really hard light source to compare it with a really soft fill. So my preference personally would be a beauty dish, which is a 55 centimeter beauty dish with a grid on that one. Okay. Awesome. Cool. All righty, what are we doing? Um, last setup. Okay, so we are using uh, the Snoot here. We've got the Pika 200 on it. So, Rihanna, is that kind of pointing at you right there? Yep. Yeah. So this is gonna be even more contrasty than the last setup because it's such a narrow beam. And even on here, so that is going to help focus the light because it's coming forward, but this is also going to help focus it because this tiny little grid is on the end of it as well. So that combined is going to give us a really, a really uh, focused and controlled light. Okay. That there? Yep. So again, let's start with our key and then we'll bring in our fill in a moment. So I'm going to turn this off. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Come over here. Okay, looking towards the snoop for me, Rihanna. Hold that, lovely. Okay, so if we look at that, I think I'm going to raise that a little bit higher. I think it's hitting more of Rihanna's mouth than it is her eyes, but that is the difference between um, how narrow this snoot is, is that it can be the difference between from there to there can make a difference. Same again, Rihanna. Okay, that's good, that's much better. So, we've got our key. We can see that we've got no detail anywhere else in this image. Um, everything is just black. So that's why we're now gonna introduce our second light and we're using this uh, grid here. Um, so this is, not grid, sorry, it's um, this color gel. So I've actually got this MagMod system here and that just attaches to the Pika 200. Now, Earlier, when we were saying about do you prefer the bare bulb versus the Fresnel, this is why I like using the Fresnel because it's so much easier to add magmod attachments, magnetic modification. So I've got two blue, full blue gels. I've put them together. I've put them in the magmod holder. And then we just simply attach it like that, magnets. And that's going to create a blue shadow to the image to give us the detail, but with that blue tinge. So, I now switch that on, and let's turn off A. So the only thing firing will be our fill. Same again, Rihanna. Okay, a little bit too bright. <laughs> Bring that down a little bit, same again, Rihanna. Uh, still a bit too bright for me. I'm just going to bring it down one more stop. Lovely, hold that. Okay, so everything has got a, a wash of blue now. Now let's try and combine everything. Same again, Rihanna, looking up towards the snoot here. Okay, and there we've combined it. So what's good about this is your key light will power through and, and cut through the blue. So you might thinking, well, how does this kind of work? Why is there not blue on her face? Well, that's the beauty of the key. The key is more powerful than the fill. And I said at the start, your fill needs to be less powerful than your key. If it is more powerful, then it's not really your fill because it's just filling in those shadows. It's helping it out. So the beauty of that key is it's firing and it's overpowering that fill blue light, which is why we're not really seeing that being influenced. So that's how you can uh, combine the two. If I was to turn the, turn the blue gel, um, take it off, 
this is how much of a difference that blue color is making. Same again, Rihanna, bring in your hands up again for me. Hold that, lovely. So we can see it actually makes quite a big difference. We also see that it, um, we lose a lot of light when we do use it. So just for the purpose of this, I'm gonna lower the power and pretend that it is the correct exposure. Lovely. So there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong with this. It's filling in the shadows correctly, but obviously using a blue gel just makes it a little bit more, a little bit more artistic. So if we do the same again, turn the power back up. I think it was there. Same again, hold that. And looking towards me. That's it, hold that. Okay, hold that. And looking towards the snoop. That's it. And bringing your arms up here. That's it, hold that. And eyes to me. Chin down, that's it. Leaning towards me, that's it. Good. And back to me. Hold that. Lovely. And relax. So we can see when we combine everything, it just creates that little bit more drama when we introduce that, those two blue gels um, using the MagMod system. Are there any questions? Uh, we haven't had anything extra come through at the moment. So if you do have any questions, then please put them in the, uh, the chat as soon as, uh, as soon as possible, and then we'll try and get them to you. Um, but this was, when you spoke earlier, this is something you haven't really done before, normally. It's not normally you. It's not actually, no. This was, a, I just thought this would be a good um, demo to demonstrate. It's not my usual thing. I don't often um, use uh, gels. If I do use gels, they're usually CTO gels, colour temperature orange gels, when I use them as hair lights. But this was actually quite fun for me. I've never done this before, especially when in the last stream I had 15 seconds to do it in. Um, so it was nice that I had a little bit more time to play around with this. And uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with the result considering uh, I've got three cameras pointing at me and we're going out live. I don't think it's been too bad, but yeah. Um, just to recap guys, because we are coming to the end of uh, this stream now, this demo, but um, just to reiterate, every, everything here you have seen has been lit with um, Essential Photo Pixel Pro products. So if you do have any questions, even after the stream, then please just uh, leave a comment below and um, I will even reply to the messages in the rewatch. So if you're not watching this live, I'll still get back to your questions, not a problem at all. And also just a reminder that we are broadcasting to multiple social media platforms at the same time. The only way we're able to do this is using a, a software called Restream, a platform called Restream. So we are currently going live to all of my social media channels as well as Pixel Pro's channels and as well as uh, the Photography Show's Facebook page. And if you want to try Restream, then if you use the code TOMMY100 at the checkout, that will give you a free pro plan for 30 days. So not even just the basic plan, that will jump you straight to the pro plan, which is actually what I'm using here today to uh, affiliate all the comments and go out to as many social media platforms as possible. But before we go, I want to go around the room because I've got some thank yous for, for making all this possible. So let's start over here to my left. Um, this is Graham. Graham has been uh, sorting out all the comments. He's been looking after us and keeping me, uh, keep, keeping my nerves at bay. So <laughs> keeping you steady. So much, keeping you on track this time. Keep me on track. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Graham, if, uh, if people want to find you, where can they go? Uh, if you want to look for me, my main uh, tag or anything you want to look for on Instagram or Facebook is G Beauty Photo. Um, I'm also setting up as uh, helping other people who want to set up a photography business. Um, and my tag for that is Bewley's, B-E-W-L-E-Y-S underscore life. And you specialize more in newborn and family stuff. So yeah. if you have any questions specifically about that genre, then Graham is going to be your person. At the back, we've got Rihanna. Rihanna's been our fa uh, fabulous model today. And if you want to find Rihanna, you can find her at Rihanna Horner on Instagram. Thank you very much, uh, Rihanna. And over here, uh, we've got Dan the man. Dan has been, uh, as, you, as you will have seen, he's been running around and helping us do all the setups, changing between all the setups. So thanks ever so much, Dan. Couldn't have done it without you. Uh, we've got Mr. Michael Mowbray over here. Thanks ever so much, Mike, for, for being here as always and filming all, all the content, even if it is live. And finally, at the very back of the room, 
We've got uh, my sister, Cassie Reynolds. She has been vision mixing and doing all the cutting for us and looking after all the camera angles for us today. Woo! But that's about it from me, guys. Thank you ever so much. Again, if you've enjoyed this live stream, please make sure you hit the like button um, or share it if you're watching this on Facebook or um, YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. Um, but yeah, that's about it from me. Thanks ever so much. We'll see you soon. Bye.